Time to Cook with Susan Beck. Well, today we're going to make our fudge. It's Christmas time and it's time to get some of those holiday goodies underway. Well, today I'm going to make a fudge recipe that after having tried many different ones, I have come to like best. This one is made with marshmallow cream. I like to use a combination of semi-sweet chocolate chips. We'll use two bags of those and one bag of milk chocolate chips. We'll be using a stick of butter and some sugar and evaporated milk today for our fudge. This will be making a 9 by 13 inch pan of fudge. If you don't want to make that much, it's easy to cut this recipe in half and just use a um, 8 inch square or 9 inch square baking dish. All right, we will want our baking dish to be greased today, so we will go ahead and do that and set it to the side. And then we are going to be measuring our other ingredients into two bowls. We will start with, this is the bowl that will go hot, I should call it. This saucepan is going to go onto the top of the stove, and I already have measured out four and a half cups of sugar. Yes, fudge is rather rich, as you can see from every single one of these ingredients. All right, into that sugar, and I like to give my evaporated milk a little shake. This is a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk, the standard size. I like to use a can opener that will punch a hole in two sides of a can. That allows some air to go through and makes it pour better. Now this sugar and evaporated milk is going to go on to the top of the stove on one of the burners and we need to get this brought up to a boil and we're going to stir constantly so that it does not burn because it's very easy to burn sugar and we're going to keep it at that um, high temperature for about four minutes. We need to break down those sugar crystals and get everything to melt without burning. Okay, I'm going to set that to the side. I had a note on my recipe that I should use the largest saucepan I own. Well, I didn't follow that direction today, and if you watch all the way to my deleted outtakes and bloopers, you will see why it is best to use something larger than a two-quart saucepan. The next part is to put my other ingredients into a bowl, and I want this done before I start messing around with that hot oven and worrying about burning. I am going to have all my other ingredients ready to go, and the heat of the milk and sugar will melt these together. So both packages of semi-sweet chocolate and my one package of milk chocolate chips. Just like my peanut cluster recipe that I posted probably two Christmases ago on my YouTube channel, I like the combination of chocolates. My um, peanut cluster recipe also uses some um, almond bark in it as well. Today we'll stick with just these two. Now to help this butter melt more quickly, because remember this is not going into the saucepan on the top of the stove. This butter has to melt by the addition of our boiling sugar mixture. So we're going to cut this butter into, oh I don't know, eight, ten pieces here and make little chunks out of it and that will help to speed up the process. Our chocolate's already in small pieces. So here we go, just, you know, a tablespoon or a half a tablespoon piece at a time. So in goes my butter, and I am going to just kind of stir that all together right now. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is my marshmallow cream. This is a seven ounce tub, and I'm just gonna use the whole thing again. goes. I want this all ready so that when my boiling sugar mixture is ready, I can just pour it over the top. I find a rubber spatula works quite well for getting out the marshmallow cream, but when I'm going to do my stirring with my hot mixture, I'm going to be using a wooden spoon. Right, it's time to move everything over to the stove. I have my Burner set to high for the moment, just to kind of get it going. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give that sugar and evaporated milk a little bit of a stir here. So that that sugar starts melting into the liquid. And 
And I'm not going to keep that on high for very long. Once I get it to a boil here, I'm going to probably turn it down to a medium high heat. I want to keep it boiling for those four minutes, but I don't um, want to burn it either. It's been about two minutes that this saucepan has been on high heat. And as you can see, it's become a liquid. The sugar is melting, but we do not have a boil yet. And we want to get this to a strong rolling, rolling boil so that we really break down those sugar crystals. So I'll just continue stirring until we hit that point. All right, we're starting to get good sized bubbles around the outside edge. Notice when I stir, I really get down into the grooves where the side meets the bottom and then I like to scrape across the bottom everywhere as well, making sure that nothing is burning. All right, this is really coming to a rolling boil. So I'm gonna turn this down to medium and I've moved it to a smaller burner. And I'm even moving it off the heat here because it's ready to boil over on me again. Be sure to watch the clips at the end for my disaster. While this is still really, really hot, we're going to be pouring it into our marshmallow cream butter and chocolate mixture. I'm gonna put about a fourth of it in at a time and kind of just work that hot, hot sugar and evaporated milk into my chocolates, marshmallow, and my butter. And this is going to melt those ingredients. So notice we never put the chocolate or the butter on the heat. Time to add a little more. And everything is melting really well in this Oh. Okay, last pour. And notice nothing burned in the bottom of my pan. That's due to all that stirring while it was on the heat. Now cleanup is nice and easy with fudge. Even though it looks like you have a lot of stickiness here to deal with, hot water just melts that sugar away and it will quickly clean up. All right, we still have some lumps of butter. Chocolate's not completely smooth yet, so I'm just gonna keep stirring. Well, I'm still finishing up the stirring here. It's just not quite smooth yet, so we need that all to melt, but it will. This is still very, very hot. This pan is warm on the sides and I even set it on a little pot holder there. Probably not hot enough to burn the top of my countertop, but definitely a very, very hot mixture when you boil sugar. Now notice I did not use a candy thermometer for this. I find that just by timing it for that four minutes of a rolling boil is sufficient. And the last thing is just making sure you don't have any lumps yet. And it does get a little bit hard to stir as it starts to thicken up. Now this won't be ready to eat right away after I pour it into this pan. It's going to need to sit um, for several hours for sure. Nice smooth shine to it now. And into our pan it goes. Look at that big gorgeous pan of fudge. The fudge has been in the fridge for, oh, I don't know, three and a half hours, so it should be ready to cut. I had it covered tightly with some saran wrap, and that's how I will leave it if I want to just leave it in the fridge. My favorite way to store it is to put it into some tins. All right, let's slice into this. Now, this recipe, I've tried many fudge recipes, and I just really, really like this one because it is just so creamy and smooth. The texture is just perfect and it never turns out grainy. I mean, I've had some really gritty fudge before and you know, I just don't enjoy it. So this recipe, and I think it's because you add that hot um, mixture of your evaporated milk and sugar onto your chocolate chips and you just stir and you add a little more and you stir and it seems to just really keep that texture nice and smooth and you just don't end up with lumpy grits. The other key thing is making sure you boil 
So that's sugar for long enough. Let's give you a close up look of this. You can just stuff. see how smooth that is. I mean, there's just no grittiness, no sugar crystals in that at all. Mm. Unbelievably smooth. And to me, that is a sign of a good piece of fudge. Now we are getting to that rolling boil. I'm gonna turn this down to medium. That should keep it. Ooh, I'm gonna turn it off because I just made a disaster. 